I thought today would be my day off, but then I remembered that new Switch games don't take any days or weeks off. So we're back with six new Switch games announced this week. Five are brand new titles. One is a very important, at least to me, release date update. I think you're going to like this list, so make sure to hit that like button if you enjoy these videos. Let me know in the comments down below which game looks best to you. Let's go straight to the trailers, and you can decide from this first one if it's going to be a good set or not. You know we like to watch the trailers together. We like to judge these games and see what they got. But you know it's going to be pretty hot when we start with new Mortal Kombat. This is MK11 Aftermath hitting the Switch on May 26th. They bring in their first major story DLC ever. New characters, Fujin, Shiva, Robocop. These stories are like goofy, but I, I actually think they're more quality than they have any right to be. Do you? And the gameplay, you know, is phenomenal. We don't have to even debate the fact that new characters means new awesomeness. My only concern with this one is that MK11 on the Switch is on sale so frequently. We see that $23.99 price point or even $19.99 a lot. This is pushing the $60 full value because it's bringing in new characters and bringing in new story and I'm guessing going to bring in all the other DLC and kind of like a Fighter of the Forever pack. Maybe not, you know, well, basically a game of the year, but game, you know, has been out for a while, so. We need help. But who's help? Robocop? It's, it's so awesome to me that NetherRealm has basically become the gold standard for fighters. You know, uh, a studio that started off with just over-the-top gore and goofiness, like, they figured out a way to make their games awesome in the modern era. Injustice, MK, like, they crush it. Cannot wait to see what they do for next gen. But right now, MK11 is the jam. Here he comes. A little Robocop action for everybody to start your weekend. Got a lot of really good movie characters in this game. It's pretty impressive. Uh, so it is a big package uh, that brings all of it to you. You can grab, yeah, like everything in this new $60 pack. Aww. Friendship. Or uh, you could just get the... Uh, we get skins with pre-order, or you can get the um, just the expansion. But the nice part of this baby is that it's day and day on Switch. May 26th, I am definitely in on this. It was May the 4th week, so I knew we were going to get an announcement from LEGO. And I hoped that it would be summer, but instead it is a far, far, far away release date. Skywalker Saga looks so good, and so it saddens me to see that the release date for this game is going to be October 20th. That is far away and right before the new console. So I wonder if this is going to end up being a cross-gen release. But I understand it. it. It really... I really believe that this game was planned for, like, soon right now. Like, May, June. And because of the virus and because of work from home and because of all the chaos, it had to be pushed to the fall. Now, maybe they also are going to make a version that is optimized for Xbox Series X and for PlayStation 5. But... Nonetheless, we have to wait five more months to get this one. I'm super pumped. I think the LEGO games are criminally underrated. It's also like, it, it's funny because it's like under the radar that LEGO games are great, but it's so over the radar that people say, no, they're really good. So it's, it's hard to talk about them because I feel like it's just like a weird space, but they are quality. And this one looked amazing. It's one of my favorite games of E3 last year. A big surprise. They've really upped the ante. The environments are huge. The graphics are so much better. Every character can dance and there's such a variety of people to play as and you got to imagine that they're going to bring a little baby yoda action and mandalorian action into this package especially now that it's not coming out to october they got so much time to throw the child in there uh give me some babu frick and i am on board i'm very excited for this game i think it's going to be a must buy especially since it sounds like it's going to hit day and date 
on Switch, which is amazing. We don't usually get that uh, all that often. You get to play through all nine movies, and uh, in a year where things are kind of sad, I think it's going to bring some joy, especially with those aforementioned dance moves. Team 17 showing up with a little sauce in Rogue Heroes Ruins of Tassos, a game coming this summer. It is a roguelite dungeon diver, very much looking like a old school Legend of Zelda with procedurally generated dungeons that can be played solo or co-op. I think this one looks really good. Team 17 usually publishes pretty solid work. We're talking games like Overcooked and My Time at Portia and uh, Yoku's Island Express. This one looks fun. I like the aesthetic. It's simple, but it has its own like slight tweak on the formula. Cooperative Zelda dungeons that have puzzles, combat, upgrades, and the ability to, uh, I hope, overall progression as you pass through the game over screens and you, you go through the different runs. Um, yeah, character and village upgrades. I've seen and heard that there's also an overworld um, that you are going to be upgrading, so there's a lot that you can do. Yeah, there we go. That Sign me up. I'm in. Summer 2020. Give me a release date. Hopefully this thing is like 15 bucks. It looks very fun. Now, will I play it couple? Will I play it solo? That's kind of more of the name of the game for me because ooh, that's a very mad mushroom. I like games like this solo so you feel like you did all the work. But I know people really also enjoy playing this stuff co-op. I'm guessing it's going to have online co-op. I hope. It's up to four players. I'm trying to see. Um, yeah, online. Online and local co-op, dungeons, cash, upgrades, puzzles. This looks pretty sweet. I mean, we're rolling into a really nice week of games. Mortal Kombat, Lego Star Wars, and now Rogue Heroes looking solid. This is a surprisingly strong lineup of six. And this game from Team 17, out of nowhere, looks like a real, real must-buy. Let's take things Maybe to the too. dark side with Colot, which is coming out on May the 14th. It was just announced. This actually released a couple years ago on other platforms. It is a popular spooky indie horror, games. indie horror title. Already feeling the fear. Based on motives of a true event. It's like set in snowy peaks, so I don't know if there's yetis or just... The, the, the elements that are scary, but it looks good. Also, very nerve-wracking. journey that will frighten you <laughs> to the bone. I love this trailer that the dude is playing the Switch and playing the game in the snow. Like, A-plus for effort there, guys. What is the horror element? That's what I'm unsure of. It's got to be, like, yetis or snow beasts or maybe killers? It's coming now. To Nintendo Switch. I like that. Coming now. Prepare you know, yourself we're seeing a really good... The truth. A really good uh, string of games that get announced, and then they're just, like, out. Right? Like, they're out in a couple weeks. They're out in a couple days. They're out... We're going to run the trailer back. Um, it does, unfortunately, I will let you know, have mixed reviews on Steam. Um, straight up, most very mixed. It got some solid games. reviews, um, but apparently it's inspired by a true event known as the Dial... Dyatlov Pass Incident, a mysterious death of nine Russian Based hikers, which led to countless unconfirmed hypotheses. So you have to figure out what happened and where they went. But a lot of people are saying that it is a very um, short game um, and that it is a walking simulator, which we know are very popular, but can be kind of boring if not handled with extreme TLC. So I'm intrigued, especially their trailer is winning me over. Sometimes you do crazy things like this. And you're like, oh, wow. Like, I, I that looks interesting, but I think this might be a wait and see because the game unfortunately wasn't received super well when it initially released. So price point, um, I, I, I hope it's Coming I hope it's on the lower end. I miss Geometry Wars. I think Geometry Wars should be on Switch. Microsoft has handed over some of their awesome uh, smaller titles to the system, Cuphead and Ori and whatnot. So. Could we have Geometry Wars? This game is called Breakpoint and reminds me of Geometry Wars, although it is a hack and slash twin stick shooter. So it's a melee, fo melee focused Geometry Wars, which is a very interesting concept. Um, they say it's, you know, obviously unique because of melee. Um, you gain XP for your weaponry that can level up, uh, a bunch of different levels, a bunch of different weapons, and the more powerful your weapons, the bigger your area of effect, and then you're really taking out 
uh, tons of neon geometric enemies in the arenas. I don't know if they'll be able to capture the modes and the replayability of Geo Wars, but if they can come close and it, it releases at a decent price point, this actually looks really fun. It's supposed to launch sometime in 2020. It's going to be Switch and Steam, so obviously we'll play it on Switch. It looks pretty fun. Like, I'm not going to lie. Everything this week has had appeal and intrigue. Um, I, I, like I said, I'd probably rather just have Geometry Wars. Um, I, I love 1 and 2. But this this looks interesting. It reminds me of... um, What's that game? I, don't, I know it's not super melee focused, but this reminds me of like a hybrid of like Geometry Wars and tilt a -Lib, which was one of my early day iPhone obsessions. Um, like back when I got my first iPhone. I guess I remember that mobile game, tilt a -Lib. But it's, it was super good, you know, when it came out. And this this kind of seems like a little bit of a mix of that. The idea of the, le the weapons leveling up as well, like as you go, that looks pretty neat um, that you're progressing in that way. Whereas Shamrock Shoot Wars is like a big score chase and like almost like a war of attrition. Like how long can you last? This looks like it is going to boost and build as you go. Um, I just hope it controls perfectly because it, it, it's going to need to. But I'll keep my eyes on this one. Our last game of the day is called Resolution. It's from Deck 13 and Monolith of Minds. It is a cyberpunk action adventure title with these kinds of graphics. It's pretty unexplained in the copy I read. So let's see what you do. Okay, happy balloons, cyberpunk girl, giant monsters, beautiful art, but, but, I mean, it is really gorgeous. So. Yes, earmark this. But how many games look like this? How many games try to do this style? Action adventure with a little bit of quirky dialogue, boss battles, combat, projectiles and swords. Like, this is a formula that we have seen far too many times. What does resolution do special to make it stick out? It's out May 28th, so we're going to find out soon. Yeah, oh yeah. I like that big wiggler. Maybe it's the big wiggler in the balloons. There seems to be like this awkward evil cyberpunk aesthetic but then also this like goofy humor charm i it could be good I, everything today has looked pretty solid i mean there's obviously some that stand above but nothing has been really crappy and i hope that the beautiful visuals are not betrayed by subpar or even average gameplay because you know hyperlight drifter started it off and then you see so many games that look just like this i mean i played one recently called Ida that was similar it was more of a boss rush and it's very good but it's like it doesn't do enough to elevate and escalate to become a game like this it, it just kind of sits there and that's fine but with so much on the eShop and when we have like an infinite armada of titles being released and, and our money can be spent in so many ways and there's sales every week and there's new titles and there's old titles and there's ones we forgot and there's backlogs you got to do a lot to stand out will resolution do that i don't know but my hope for this week uh is that some of these games end up being really strong and I think there's a high likelihood. That'll do it for the video and the six titles. Which are your favorites? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you had fun with me today. Make sure to stay tuned for next week when we cover more games. Will they be good? Will they be bad? Well, I don't know, but we will decide together. My favorites from this week are the first two, Mortal Kombat and Lego Star Wars. But I think that Rogue Heroes title from Team 17 is looking super hot and I am going to make sure I check that one out. I love the idea of procedurally generated Legend of Zelda style dungeons. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Staying safe and staying healthy out there. I appreciate your support and love. Check out our Discord server, Switch Strong. Link in the description down below. Until next time and until next week, what'd you think of the list? Switch Force out.